you guys should be knocking out of the park together. This is a solid piece with color all over it. Dude, it's just a flat tire. Sausage, why are you so pissed, It's just man? a difference in no, taste. Dude. Why are you so, like, well, what's your problem? I knew that you were gonna tear it. I love it. Great, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Nobody else does. Artists, this week you're fighting for an Ink Master shop, and one of you won't get one. Randy, you were a photorealism guy, right? That's typically what I get asked to do. From the black to the brown to the orange to the yellow, there's no soft fades. It was kind of meant to be more of a painting style. Even if you take a painterly approach at a real photo, your quality of application still has to be there. We're lacking that. Damon. Your inexperience really shows. The shading in the spider web on her forehead, very splotchy. There's a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of weak outlines. It is just not smooth. There was no care, or attention, or detail put into this. I honestly didn't think it was like that bad. If you cannot see the many problems with your outline, then you have a major issue. Roland. I was very impressed with your knowledge and the layout and the way you fit this to the leg. The tattooing you did at the convention, there's not a person in this room that looked at that cat and said, hey, this is a professional grade quality tattoo. That stuff is not going to work in this competition. So let's talk about the bottom. Who doesn't deserve a shop here? You got Randy, who did not do solid black, who did a lot of crooked lines. I mean, that ship is a mess. It's a mess, but it could be fixed. If you had to wear David's skull or Damon's Day of the Dead Girl, what would you choose? This tattoo has a lot of technical flaws. I understand what you're saying. However, it's way more legible and readable than the skull we saw from the 20-year veteran. Let's talk about Roland's tattoo. This tattoo doesn't look bad until you get close to see that it's not 100% solid. Roland, Randy, Damon. Any one of you could justifiably be sent home. Could have put all the names in a hat and sent any of you guys home. The judges have decided. Randy, you have earned a shop. Congratulations. Thank you. Damon and Roland. Judges have decided. Roland. You've earned a shop. Have a seat. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I won't let you down. Damon, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. What's coming, you're not ready for. This is a tough house to come into when you're not ready to be here. Please pack your machines and go home. Randy. The top eyelid looks a little misshapen. And the bottom lid kind of looks a little sagging, almost like the flies on like a little piece of beef jerky. I used an actual photograph. A lot of the black and gray in this thing is very beat and very red, and the tattoo looks painful. You turned in one of the roughest tattoos of the day by far. Roland. This tattoo's bad, dude. He asked for a eyeball of his father. He wanted it not to be a pretty eyeball. His dad's kind of old. Is there any smooth shading? Nope. It's the judges have decided that the artist with the worst tattoos of the day are Roland, Randy, and Ashley. Obviously, Ashley is not standing here with you, and that is because Ashley has decided to quit. She's gone, be gone, stay gone. Roland. This tattoo does not stack up to the rest. Randy. You turned in one of the roughest tattoos. I know you're taking a beating so far here, and I want you to come back and do some I just don't know that you have that ability. All right, even though Ashley quit, Roland, Randy, either one of you could be justifiably eliminated. 
the judges have decided that both of you will get one more chance. Bubba. As soon as you get close to this thing, there's no solid color, there's no straight outline. If you give somebody enough rope, they hang themselves. And you're hanging yourself here. David. There's nothing consistent in there at all. I don't necessarily know if I even see a geometrical shape. There's a lot of chewed up skin in there. This guy has to walk around with that for the rest of his life. That's a rough one. I mean, you just hammered this guy. There's no way in hell that it was a wise decision. How do you even cover this thing? This is a responsibility thing. You can't do this. It's a tough day. Geometric tattoos, focusing on consistency. Talk a little bit about David Bell. That thing's not even gray, it's blood. Bubba. There's no straight lines. The color is not solid anywhere. I think he had a great idea. He just bit off way more than he could chew. The judges have decided. David, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. We have a lot of respect for you, man. Sometimes pain clouds the judgment. You have the most experience, and that's why it makes it unforgivable. Please pack your machines and close shop. This week, we ask you to show perfect placement with an aquatic tattoo. Roland. You kind of just put the grouper at the bottom and you left a lot of area open. I just feel like it was just unfinished. This tattoo is by no means a winner today, but you have improved. And for that, I do commend you. Baba. I thought Poseidon was my dope tattoo to get, but the carriage took over the tattoo more than Poseidon. If that would have been more prevalent, I think it would have been a little better. Just a blown attempt at a great tattoo. You're drawing against everyone. And if your drawing comes up short, it's not gonna keep you here. Randy. I mean, I can't even say the well when it's cool. It looks like something one of my kids would draw. Let me tell you something about me. When I started tattooing, I was 30 years old, okay? But this isn't about your history, Listen, bro. no, it is. It, it has nothing to do with history. Family. This has to do with what's because on the screen. I can't go into a shop as a 30-year-old homosexual and get any sort of respect from anybody. Man, who gives a what you it, do it in your private for, life? Let me tell you. You could be whatever you want, and you and should I be proud be. of that. You're not gonna get bashed for your sexual preference. You're only gonna get bashed for the quality of your craft. Today we had aquatic tattoos. We were focusing on placement. Let's talk a little bit about who missed the mark today. Randy did the squid and the whale. This looks like a Crayola scribble. There's no redeeming quality to it. And if I don't say this is crap, then I'm an idiot. Bubba did Poseidon. These seahorses, unless they took some crazy left turn, that sled is not even in the same direction of the flow. Another artist, consistently in the bottom, Roland. I just feel like it's unfinished. That's why you get the emptiness up at two thirds of the tattoo. Whether we like this tattoo or not, the lower portion of this tattoo has outline, it has shading, and it has solid color. This is his best, and he delivered it. But it wasn't done, though. Roland, Bubba, and Randy. Any one of you could justifiably be sent home. The judges have decided. Randy, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Today, we ask you to use technical precision to create an X-Men color portrait. Lydia. What happened here with the negative space underneath this gentleman? He initially had the knives, but I didn't have enough time. So I just figured I'd put a big X down there. What makes this character recognizably X-Men are those blades. Missing those, it's very difficult for me to know who this is. Roland. She does not even have the same shape. The color fades are not there. Color, as you know, is not my forte. All right, today, technical precision. Color portraits of X-Men characters. Let's talk about the bottom of the day. Lydia did Warpath. It will take a lot of work to fix this face up. And Roland. This tattoo didn't keep the shape of the face. He didn't put the shadows on the tattoo in the same place the shadows in the portrait. This is the antithesis of technical precision. 
Roland and Lydia. Either one of you could be packing your machines. The judges have decided. Roland, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Today, you had to use contrast to make a neo-traditional lady or gentleman that pops. Jim and Bubba. You did the grandmother, right. you did the grandfather. So this gentleman is actually not Asian, as it turns out. Oh, he's not? No, he's not. Bubba, when you did this drawing, did you not notice the differences in the shapes of the eyes? No. How? They're offset. One's larger than the other. It's time to get back to the drawing board, literally. King Ruck and Keith. Tell me what happened. It was a bad canvas from the beginning. But you turned in outlines. Yes. And King Ruck, you've also tattooed yourself. I still wanted to show you guys that I still want to compete. Well, we appreciate that. So let's start with you, King. You have a lot of really rough outlines here. As we start hitting him with the lines, he would freak out, he would jump, he would move around. If that leg's moving, push on it, man. Hold it down. You have this huge oval line that's going around the side that really shows a lot of imperfections. All right, King, let's take a look at the tattoo you did on yourself. You do show contrast. And really, it's probably the cleanest tattoo you've done since you've been here. Thank you. Let's move on to Keith. Most that I have the judge on is what area you colored solid black. This area is very rough, and it's just not there. Yeah, it's not there, because I wasn't able to really go into it and do I mean, it's, it's easier for you to say up here, like, yeah, you know, you're a little. It's not yeah, easy it's, for it's, us to do anything. Yeah, dude, yeah, but you know what it is, though, man? Actually, I'm not even halfway done the goddamn thing, so, like, how can you judge something that you can't see? You're not seeing anything. It's up. Listen, man, you're crazy on edge. You're just stewing and mad and you're not confident in you. If you can't be confident in you, then how can we? All right, so the challenge was neo-traditional gentlemen and ladies focusing on contrast. Obviously, we have King Ruck. He's struggling. Clearly turned in an unfinished, sketchy tattoo. He's falling apart. I gotta say, I really like that he tattooed himself. What about Keith, man? Keith is not doing well. This is not a flattering design. This is not a way to win over your client. Next up, Bubba. He had the good picture, man. If one of them should have came out better, it was this one. Just being able to draw the layout of a face and make it the right proportion. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see any more of this We need to take these guys out in multiples. We got to nip this in the bud today. Keith, King, and Bubba. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Keith, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Don't relax, by the way. Because Keith's not the only one going home today. The judges have decided. Bubba. You do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. The obvious problems in this tattoo are huge. Your drawing's everything. Please pack your machines and close shop. Today, you had to show adaptability by transforming tattoos that your canvases regret into tattoos they can wear proudly. Based on your work, two artists will be closing shop. Jim, let's start with you. Come on, dude, if this came into your shop, what the f would you have done? Not roses. You know better. For a cover-up, it's a fail. King Ruck. A bunch of different ways you could approach that. A nice black and blue rose could have been the cover up. The horseshoes could have been behind it and banners under it. I've had some bomb canvases. There's 60 plus years of tattooing sitting at this table. You cannot tell me about a canvas. Gentle J. I'm most confused over the hat. It just screams cover up. There's... Melissa. How you feeling, Melissa? Terrible. 
I tried really hard, but she was very difficult to work with. If it's an engine, it's all gotta fit together. And if parts don't fit together well, then parts don't work well. She specifically wanted new school. She specifically wanted the bubbliness. You do not let the client drive. The second you give up that seat, you give up your shot at winning 100 grand. All right, so adaptability. We yes. did a cover up today. Two people are going home. There was talk Me, about putting King Rudd in the bottom. You have an upside down rose. It's tucked into a black abyss. That screams cover up. Terrible. We had Jim. You can see Marco right through this tattoo. Why is there so much yellow? Over black lettering. Melissa. A lot of things are out of whack. The details of the outlines are so wonky and out of shape. Gentle J. A mess. There's no highlight anywhere. The smoke is terrible. The eyes are terrible. Forget about the way you shaded the hat. Jim. King Ruck. Jay and Melissa. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. King Ruck, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. The judges have also decided. Jim, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. This tattoo, it's see-through. And for a cover-up, that's a no-go. Both of you, please pack your machines and close shop. There was a lot of tattoos that were done today that were not good. Artists, today, you had to show negative space with a black and gray demon. Lydia, you're up first. Because the teeth are the same color as the fur, as everything, the mouth gets really lost. I would have liked to see the teeth and the drool have a little more zing so we don't have to question what the lines are. Wondering what something is in your tattoo is never a good quality. Melissa. He didn't want ears, he didn't want horns, he just wanted the mouth to be the main focus of it. It doesn't bother me that it looks like a turtle, but the big black circles at the top, you don't really need because the edge of the top of his head kind of gets a little bit lost in that black there. Halo. My first instinct when I saw this was very hard to read. This wing that comes down, I thought that was some kind of a road going up to a mountain. And I still can't figure out if this is a breast plate or if there's a hand holding something in front of her. It's kind of made to look like fingers that kind of cup it. It definitely is the oddest, weirdest one of the bunch because there is a lot of detailed elements in a very strange composition. He had so many elements of cool things and I was like, oh, I want to put these wings in and I definitely want to get those shoulder pads and then I want to get this breastplate because it's cool. And You just took on a lot of drawing. If you don't swing for the fences, you don't hit them, right? But this was definitely a big swing in a short amount of time. Today's challenge, black and gray demons, use of negative space. Let's talk about the bottom. We had Lydia, who I was surprised. I thought this was gonna be her comfort zone. It's pretty flat with one tone. There's not enough black in the outline of the hair to give this thing definition or depth. Melissa. It's just the turtle demon to me, man. The background outright looks like a cover-up. We got Halo. This is my least favorite thing he's done. He overthought it. Lydia, Melissa, Halo. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Lydia, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Today you had the ultimate test of flexibility, collaborating with another artist to create one tattoo. Gentle J and Melissa. We talked to the client and she had a list of things that she was open to. She really liked the idea of the elephant. She wanted a geometric pattern. And then we suggested the headdress. Like she wanted flowers. the lotus just kind of build the tattoo around what we felt we were going to be best at. I like the red designs on top. Those are really beautiful, and it's a really nice look for a woman's leg. The details in the headdress are great, and that stuff's really exciting and cool to look at. But since it's our job to pick it apart, I see a lot of flaws. Just the inconsistencies of the body. I would have liked to see the elephant come out of the lotus instead of behind it, because it just puts a weird cookie cutter vibe to it, not a flowy vibe. The bottom of this tattoo looks terrible. There's no part of that where I could agree with you. There's no such thing as filigree coming out of a lotus flower. There's no it's such thing as a horse with tentacles on its head either. But... Yeah, but we knew it was tentacles. To have an elephant's leg step out of filigree, I mean, look at it, it's crazy. For two people to be up all night drawing, I expect more. We weren't up all night. Well, you should have been. That's the problem. 
sausage and Maddie. Explain this design a little bit. This is actually just like a big giant mix of the coolest stuff out of Japanese styles that I like to put into things. I wanted to come up with something that was really cool. Technically sound, it's there. Saturated everything, it's there. Skin's breathing through the I mean, to me, it just breathes awesome. Technically, this tattoo is smooth throughout. I'm just not thrilled about this design. It kind of looks like someone hit a dragon with a baseball bat and just smushed the face in. Having said that, I love it technically, and I think that the line work and the color work, everything is really solid and tight. It is tattooed well, but there's four people up here that just don't aesthetically like it. You guys should be knocking out of the park together. This is a solid piece with color all Dude, over it. Dude, it's just a flat tire. Sausage, why are you so pissed, It's just man? a difference in no, taste. Why are you so, like, well, what's your problem? I knew that you were gonna tear it. I love it. Great, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Nobody else does. You have the ability to do whatever you want on somebody. Don't do passion pieces. Do showstoppers. Do something that's a fight. If not, you yourself. Do you understand you can go home for this? No way. Okay. I don't see it. No way. I don't, I don't Buddy, see it, Buddy, careful what you wish for. All right, today we did collaboration tattoos. We're testing flexibility. Let's move along to Melissa and Jay. In the line work and the shading, it just feels a little more amateurish. And it's so cut and paste. Flower, elephant, red background. Let's talk about Maddie and Sausage. They just did an ugly drawing. But it's like, how much do you fault them for none of us liking the aesthetic of it, you know? Because obviously, technically, it looks great. Sausage, Maddie, Melissa, and Jay. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Melissa and Jay, you have the worst tattoo of the day. Only one of you will be packing your machines. The two of you must face off, tattooing the same design created by our guest judge, Luke Westman. You guys are gonna have the drawing already done, so all you gotta do is execute it. You've each been randomly assigned a human canvas, and you will have four hours to tattoo head to head. One of you will lose your shot at $100,000 and the title of Ink Master. Melissa and Jay, you faced off tattooing a design by Luke Westman to show your flexibility. One of you will be staying, and one of you will be packing your machines. First up, Melissa. Overall, I like the tattoo. I like the color choices you went with. I like the way you did the leaves, but I don't like how you left the white spaces in the rows. Normally, you can kind of leave those open, but since it was bigger, it kind of stands out a little bit more. The main thing that jumps out at me right when I start to look at it is your line work. The line work in these tattoos have to be really precise and dead on. Jay. I don't love the color palette. It doesn't have a dynamic feel that you'd like to see from this type of design. It shows a little bit of lack of flexibility. Everything kind of muddies out a little bit. The head doesn't stand too far apart from the rose because it's like a deeper, darker feel. Where you took that greatness and faded out is by doing these leaves just so dark. The leaves actually was the canvas's favorite part of the tattoo. He wishes I would have colored the whole thing solid like that. You went a little bit overboard between your black shading and the no breaks in the leaves. This looks like you're hiding something. If you look at that rose and you reimagine what the rest of your tattoo could have looked like had you have stayed on that course, you'd be looking at a very different tattoo. I'm happy with the tattoo I did. My line work was clean. My shading was all solid where it needed to be. I know you guys say the saturation in the leaves is a little bit much and they're too dark, but the canvas, that was his favorite part. He's a tattoo artist. The person wearing it is who I'm listening to. And he's happy with the tattoo, so I'm happy with that. If there was a checklist, you'd hit some, she'd hit some. If Melissa's shading was a little solider, if her rose looked a little more like his, if he had a little bit less of the muddied brown, you know, his leaves are completely saturated, hers weren't. Which makes it hard, there's no clear cut winner for me. The judges have reached a decision. Jay. You do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. You, Scott. Today, you had to show your mastery of proportion by tattooing a Japanese snake on your canvas's ribs. Melissa, let's start with you. 
There's a few rules that would apply here. Like, if you look at the lower jaw, it runs alongside the underbelly. That's getting lost right there. If you'd moved it up, there would have been a little bit of a separation. Also, your leaf goes right to the back. You should never have lines touching like that. Just little things like that, I think, would help your work look a lot better. You don't have this way of making your drawings flow nicely. It's not that you're a bad artist. You just do things very stiff. You got to find your flow. Halo. What made you decide to just do the bottom just flat across? I have no background in Japanese. Traditional, I just didn't know how to end it. This does look like a tombstone. It also looks like it would fit better on an arm. Now, I understand that this is not your area of expertise. Unfortunately, it shows. You should have taken another two hours just on the drawing and done less tattooing because the snake body makes zero sense. The belly of the snake is going in the opposite direction that it should go. The belly's going upwards, not downwards. It's just way off, way off. Scott. I did get a little new school with it, but when I'm freehand drawing, I can't help it. My style's gonna come out in my drawing. One of the things about Japanese tattooing is it's not necessarily always about you. It's part of a larger history, a larger culture. So walking in and being like, I'm doing it my way, it's insulting, it's utterly incorrect. She was a tough canvas, man. Her being a tough canvas aside, your drawing's your drawing. If she's a tough canvas, it's gonna show even more in your application, which it doesn't. It's just odd. It's an odd drawing, man. I'm not making excuses. You know, I'm gonna stand behind this piece. It's definitely my least favorite today. And it's applied meticulously, which makes it tough, man. It's a crazy thing, this competition. All right, traditional Japanese snakes on the ribs. Let's talk about Halo's piece. From a distance, it is a big, huge spot. When people think Japanese tattooing, they think this style that was made up hundreds of years ago that really works well with the body. And what he did, didn't. If you look at Scott's tattoo, I don't care what day the challenge is, it's just an unappealing tattoo. This thing is a complete nightmare. So it's obviously between Scott for the first time and Melissa, who has the worst tattoo of the day. It's a big red S. When I look at that tattoo across the room, all I see is a red S. Yeah. Halo, Scott. Melissa, one of you is about to lose your place in the top four. The judges have decided. Melissa, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. It comes down to your body of work. Justifiably, you may not have had the worst tattoo of the day, and I don't think you did. We're at the point now where you don't have a W in your column and everybody else in the room does. And that's the only thing saving somebody who's down here with you from not packing. Overall, you have respect to the judges. Thank you. Please pack your machines and close shop. Artists, this was your last chance to prove that you deserve to compete in the live finale for $100,000, a feature in Inked Magazine, and the title of Ink Master. Maddie. Let me commend you on having good taste to pick the proper shaped flower to put on her chest. The way that the flower's closing on the outside and blowing open on the inside, you're drawing with a movement, and that's a great thing. All right, let's move along to your final elimination tattoo. Well, look at this tattoo from a distance. It has a cover-up feel just because that blue is so dark. The tattoo that's not the cover-up, I love the layout. I love how much open skin you left in it. That's what makes me harp on the blue roses being so dense even more. The same size roses, it's a bit much because everything the same size makes a mosaic look. If you stagger the sizes with bigger leaves and then maybe little buds, you can get more bang for your buck and more dynamics. Looking at this, the eye is just totally drawn to the blue spot. Halo. You're a cancer survivor yourself. Yeah. Did this one hit home for you more so than... Dude, I've never stayed up till 3.30 in the morning drawing four flowers. <laughs> it was intense. Yeah. Well, Halo, man, I really love the way this tattoo fits. It flows with the curve of the body. Well, speaking of flowers, let's talk about your final elimination tattoo. This canvas was completely open, brand new tattoo, yet you just did this. Uh, dude, I killed myself on this one. The tattoo overall is a beautiful tattoo. The water droplets on the petals, super glossy and HD, but then you have areas in the flowers that are very flat. Those pistols, there's no outline on one side of one. The outlines don't connect, they're just kind of here and there. You didn't put in the same level of work throughout. 
you didn't make it as interesting as you made it before. Final elimination tattoos. Four great artists remaining. Only three headed to the live finale. Next up, we have Maddie. Beautiful flowers there. It has his style. It's very well tattooed. Let's move into his elimination tattoo, the cover-up of King Ruck's Sugar Skull. He's done two separate tattoos that are just on top of each other. They don't flow together well, and those four roses look like one big blue blob. It's definitely a design flaw. Next up is Halo. He really put a lot into this tattoo. The details in the smaller flowers, the color palette, the vibrancy. But in the next tattoo, he emulated this on a lower standard. I feel like this one is just a redo, but not as nice. Today, you had to prove that you have what it takes to compete in the live finale. Maddie. Halo, the fight for the last spot at the live finale is between the two of you. Halo, you've definitely wowed everybody with all of your different art skills. I feel like throughout everything I've shown that I am versatile and I do put my all into every single tattoo that I do. Being Ink Master would just be another notch in that belt. The judges have decided. spot in the live finale. What the f oh. Congratulations. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Halo, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Halo, it was a blast watching your work, man. It's been a real pleasure for us to see the real tattooer stand up. I've said you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master about 50 times, and this is the most heart-wrenching time I've ever had to say it. Thanks, guys. This was a awesome. Awesome run. Please pack your machines and close shop.